Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul TX141 Walsh, welcoming you to an all new World of Warships video today on our channel. In this episode we shall be featuring our tier 1 German cruiser known as the Hermelin. We are in a tier 3 domination match on the map Polar, and as we can see we've had to fail division to get into such a match, we are sailing alongside our good friend Zauron, who is in his tier 2 Soviet cruiser known as the Diana. Now the focal points of today's game are in two areas. The first and more high level one is that this is my final replay from patch 0.5.9.1, the next replay will be taken from 0.5.10. And with the changes made to tier 1 ships as of the latest main patch to the game, I thought I'd say farewell to tier 1s as we knew them previously, i.e. with the removal of their armour piercing shields, the lowering of their health pools, etc etc. And I was in a way motivated by the Mighty Orlam video which I posted on this channel just under a month ago, link available in the top right corner of your screen if you have not seen it. And I really suggest you take a look as it features Zaron taking an Orlam into a tier 3 game and racking up a huge amount of damage, outplaying the enemy team to some extent and the entirety of the team he was on. So motivated by that video I decided to give it a shot in the Hermelin. Now the two ships are rather similar, when we come to think of it. They are both lightly armoured. The Hermelin on its citadel has a minimum of 6mm of armour and a maximum of 35mm of armour, meaning that this ship is prone to being citadeled with high explosive. Don't worry about the armour piercing, if that catches you on the broadside, you're going to be dead very quickly. And with a health pool of 9000, as of the previous batch, this ship would go down very fast if citadeled. So as a result we need to be evasive. And we can do that to some extent. We have a top speed of 24 knots, which means we can gradually pull distance on the heavier cruisers that we typically see at tier 2, and even those we see at tier 3. Destroyers will be a problem, but we do have some very effective armament to keep them at bay, more on that in a second. And with our rudder shift time of 3.3 seconds, it means we can wiggle our after left, right and centre. And that is a key focal point of this video as well. The concept that when you are under pressure, making sure to always keep moving, regardless of what the odds are against you, but more on that in a bit. So let us come back to our guns, seeing as we are sprinkling a lot of high explosive ammunition towards the enemy Campbelltown. You have two 128mm twin battery turrets. Now they are quite powerful. The high explosive shields, not so much. They have a fire chance of 5% upon a hit, but they do reload very rapidly. 4 seconds as standard, or basic fire and training as you're seeing here, 3.6 second reloads. The armour piercing was where it was at, because the armour piercing rounds on the ship, if I remember correctly, could citadel for 3000 damage per shot, and with a muzzle velocity of 900 metres per second, regardless of whether you're fighting high explosive or armour piercing, the shells could very quickly get to the target, and in a number of cases, citadel enemy ships, i.e. the other cruisers at tier 1, as well as the cruisers you'd face at tier 2, and even go through and citadel the likes of tier 4 and tier 5 ships quite successfully. And another inspiration in the way for why I really wanted to give this a go in the Hermelin, because I looked up the 128mm cannon on the ship and I thought to myself, these are going to be quite powerful guns, so long as they get within the right position. So I'm talked about the guns, and we must keep in mind they do have rather mediocre firing arcs, they're not the best guns for shooting over tall land masses, compared to the likes of American cannon as we have seen time and time again, on our destroyers in particular, with their rainbow shell arcs. What else is there to note about the Hermelin? Well, its concealment and its firing range are very, very difficult to manage. Its concealment as standard is 8.6 km detectability by sea. Now we are using a camouflage here to drop that to 8.4 km, and that gives us a small amount of initiative. Why is that you ask? Because the firing range of your cannon is 8.6 km, which means when you get in range to shoot someone typically you will be spotted. And because shooting all the way out to your maximum range of 8.6km is very difficult to do with the natural dispersion of your cannon, whereby your rounds will typically fall at 8.5km, sometimes heading up to your maximum range, this means that when we drop our concealment to that 8.4km detectability, we really are being spotted at our maximum firing range, or on the pinnacle of it. And we can see here we're trying to dump some rounds into an enemy Dursky here, and we're trying to keep our engagements on the fringe of our concealment range for the time being. We're picking up a couple of defence here as the Dursky overextends into the C objective. And so far both teams are pretty even, both teams have lost three ships. Our teammates are also dumping in rounds here on the Dursky, it's only going to be a matter of time before someone knocks it out, and Zaron picks up the kill. 
So far we haven't taken any damage and what we're doing is essentially holding off on the fringe using our 24 knot top speed to make sure we can always stay within the top 75% if not all the way out to the edge of our firing range in order to harass enemy ships. Because if we get focus fired it's going to be the end very quickly. Unless we can keep the distance. I.e. if we get within say 5 kilometers of foe fo and they decide to focus fire on us and then bring another one of their allies in we're really going to be in a difficult situation as it only takes one or two rounds to citadel us for us to feel the effects. But carrying on we continue to dump rounds now into Wakataku and we can see once again with our high fire rate and our maximum dispersion of 79 meters our accurate guns are doing a brilliant job right now. Okay, a little bit inaccurate there. Bit of a coincidental one, a little bit more inaccurate there, but the Wakataki is turning away. And we do the same. And again, we're turning away so that we can reset our engagements, as we have got a number of enemy cruisers and enemy ships in general which have the greater firing range, i.e. at the distance we are away from them, they could technically focus on us. And there is a Dresden on the enemy team as it turns out, who has enjoyed their ship so much they actually have advanced firing training on it. A little bit scary that, I never expected someone to enjoy the Dresden that much. But then again, some could say it's a good ship. I haven't played it enough. Regardless, we open up with armor piercing here on an enemy Dresden, and we now go to show how powerful the armor piercing is. A little bit too powerful as we over penetrate their broadside. That's why the awkward thing is about these armor piercing shells, they over penetrate a lot of the time on the very lightly armored cruisers at tier 2. Zaron gets taken out by the Dresden, and now we turn our fire towards an enemy Chikuma. We continue to get a number of over penetrations on the Dresden before switching our fire and now we start to take some nasty high explosive hits on our aft. Now at this point with two enemy ships heading towards us, two enemy cruisers that we cannot just get away from like we would in a destroyer for example, we do have to stand and fight for a bit, essentially making an offensive retreat. And with the Shikuma now turning broadside we get four over pens there and we dump in the citadel along with a hit, taking off just shy of 4000 health. So there's the citadel power of the armor piercing rounds really coming into effect. It only takes one to balance the odds from our guns. But at the same time, notice how we're already down to less than two thirds of our health through the hits we've taken and they're high explosive. So it's tit for tat right now. But as we gradually increase the range here, the Chikuma is now pulling back thanks to our fire and some torpedoes from our friendly Storos of Boy, which is off to what would be our port side. And unfortunately we're not going to finish off the Chikuma as they just fall out of our range. This is where we'd really want advanced firing training and unfortunately I didn't have enough time to get that skill for my captain before the new patch came along. But nonetheless we now switch our fire to the Dresden. We've been wiggling our aft enough to stay alive, trying to mitigate the amount of damage that's been attributed to our ship over time. And because the Dresden is such a distance and we've been over penetrating a lot, we decide to load some armor piercing at these extreme distances, hoping that the distance will cause our shells not to over penetrate on their broadside. We fry in one round, over penetrates, and the Dresden is on a bit of an oblique angle, so we switch back to high explosive straight away. So always keep in mind using your round types to your greatest advantage. We're trying to make armor piercing work, but it's not quite working. And we now disengage. We took some damage out of the Dresden, we took a lot out of the Chikuma, and we're having small rounds dumped towards us, and we've got an AFK ally right behind us, a Dresden on our team. Something special about that one, a little bit later. So in the meantime then, how have we stayed alive so far? Well we've said we've kept on the fringes of engagements. On top of that, we've been fighting aggressive retreats. We've always made sure to have rounds raining down our foes as they fired at us. We've wiggled our aft left, right and centre to make sure that if we do take it, we take the minimum number possible. As we have seen, our foes have been able to keep with us for a long period of time before we have finally broken away. Now making our way back in towards the centre of the map here, down towards B, we can see that the enemy team do have the superior numbers right now. Our team has two destroyers, two cruisers including our own, and the enemy team has five cruisers. Now some of these cruisers are severely wounded, the St. Louis for example, the Chikuma, which we crippled earlier and we're creeping towards right now and we hope to finish them off. We catch them on the fringe of our range and with high explosive is that going to be enough? Hopefully it is. There's a couple of hits but see how little damage the high explosive is doing. But we get them with our second salvo. So that's a kill, our first one of the game. And we're already up to 32,245 damage. We would expect at least one more kill already, right? But regardless, we now make our way in towards the centre of the map. We're heading underneath the arc fire, as typically when we go up against the cruisers at tier 2, they do have quite high shell arcs in the majority of cases, so if we head underneath it, it's very likely they're going to fall behind us. 
of course, unless they're anticipating us to go towards them. But we keep changing our direction as well, making ourselves unpredictable. And that's one key lesson I want you to take away from this, is that by being unpredictable in your movements, you're going to stay alive for a lot longer. It is very easy to become focused on going in this particular direction. And now we've got an awkward scenario, which is we have a St. Louis coming bow on towards us. Now our first three rounds penetrate their bow and do two and a half thousand damage. That took me by surprise, but I guess you can achieve that. The enemy Dresden behind them is the one with advanced firing training, if I remember correctly. Now I can't remember the Dresden's firing range, but I believe it is a standard roughly 8.9 kilometers. And they have been firing at us from some distance beforehand, if we go back a little bit earlier on in this replay. We decide to retreat, pulling back away from the St. Louis, because if the St. Louis goes broadside to us, we are going to be dead meat. We want to be at maximum range and just keep harassing them for the time being. And we're doing exactly what we did against the Dresden and the Chikuma from earlier. We're fighting an aggressive retreat. Wiggling our aft side to side, the rounds are heading left, right and centre around us. We're only taking the occasional glancing hit. And from the high explosive damage we've already taken to our aft, notice it is fully blackened almost. Which means high explosive shells that fall there now are going to do minimal damage. So we've been able to use one section of our ship to absorb all the damage. And meanwhile, now that St. Louis has taken enough armor piercing from our own ship, as they turn broadside, they present us with the perfect profile for armor piercing to go in and penetrate, which provides us with our second kill and 11 base defend ribbons. Now, two kills in the bag, and we also picked up a Confederate award in that time. We start to turn back towards the enemy Dresdens. There's two of them. We notice how the fire was coming from PP307, the Dresden on the left hand side, which goes to show they have AFT, and we head towards the right hand Dresden here. Now they are opening fire on our AFK ship and the reason I wanted to highlight the AFK ship where they failed to connect or are away from keyboard regardless is because that Dresden in front of us should be aiming at us. And this is something to be aware of. I know AFK ships or ones that have not connected to the game are brilliant XP haul targets but focus your fire on the ships that are still active and then pick up the free XP at the end because it's a lot easier to shoot at a foe who's not moving when you're not having rounds dumped onto you. And we're doing that here. Now some of you may say at this point, well you're technically seal clubbing and as a result these guys are new. That's true, but we need to make a point of things. I'm not having a go at the people who I'm saying are shooting at the AFK players and whatnot. I'm just saying these are things which I learned quite early on and I would like to pass on the knowledge. So. Having dumped a lot of rounds into this leading Dresden who is still fine at the AFK ship, we do have a lot of rounds coming in from the rear Dresden and we can see how their AFT skill is really helping them out as we take a few hits. But as we note, we are wiggling around, we're on a broadside right now and we take out the lead Dresden for our third kill who almost took out our AFK Dresden. And I'm sorry for using the abbreviation away from keyboard, I think I enunciated that at one point, I should have said that first. And now the rear of Dresden is aiming at our AFK Dresden, or the one who hasn't connected. So we decide to open up some armor piercing here, hoping to reciprocate our luck and get some penetrations in on their broadside to extreme range. We get one penetration and two overpins, allowing us to pick up a high caliber award. And with this Dresden being the final ship left on the enemy team now, it's a case of us engaging them at long range, and our friendly Starry Savoy who's done a fantastic job of capturing objectives throughout the match, and we will see that reciprocated in a second in the stats, they are going to creep up behind the Dresden here and open fire as well. So we've got the Dresden trapped between two, two ships from opposing sides of the map. We're coming down from the north, meanwhile the Storos of is coming up from the south, and it's only going to be time before they fall under our sustained fire. They open up a number of shells, but now we start to go into our wiggling formation here, making sure to fight that offensive retreat. We dump in some more armor piercing, get a nice penetration there, I believe. Some of those shells go over then. We're dropping some more down on the target now. Set of overpins for 1000 damage. Can we get him? There we go. End of the game. Fourth kill. Let's go take a look at those post game stats. Well, that was quite a back and forth game, but we pulled off the victory in the end. And for it, we received 164,822 silver, 2726 experience, and we also picked up two achievement awards. The first being Confederate for damaging at least six enemy ships whereby the damage caused to each ship must exceed 20% of their normal HP, and we also picked up the High Caliber Award for damaging at least 4 enemy ships, whereby the damage caused must exceed 30% of the total health pool of all the ships in the enemy team. 
and we can see we earned our way to that high caliber award by picking up 63,991 damage. In terms of our ribbons, we picked up 152 target hit ribbons with our main batteries, 5 incapacitations, 4 enemy ships destroyed, 2 fires set, 1 citadel hit, and 17 base defends. Looking at the team scores, we can see our base experience tally of 1,817 put us in second place. We were pipped to first by 17 experience points, with first place going to Firestorm01. Congratulations to you sir, you did a brilliant job in your tier 2 Russian destroyer known as the Storozovoy, picking up 3 kills and I swear quite a number of base captures, seeing as you were the one flitting between the objectives over the course of the game. Meanwhile, in our own work, we managed to pick up our experience tally through doing a lot of damage and also picking up some base defence. It would appear as though we, as a pair, worked together in the end on our own different directives in order to help secure the victory for our team. Looking at our detailed report, we have one important item to note here, and that is shell choice in order to maximise our damage output. We fired 153 main battery shells that actually hit the target. A third of these were high explosive, meanwhile two thirds of them were armour piercing approximately. But when we look at the damage attributed to each shell type, the ratio does not match up. Instead the ratio switched to approximately 3 quarters armour piercing damage and a quarter high explosive damage. So this goes to show how we made the most of our armour piercing shells when it mattered to get the maximum damage out of our guns, resorting to high explosive whenever our armour piercing would be ineffective, or at least in a good number of cases. And as for our credits and XP, we can see that after all deductions we walked away with 142,322 silver. In conclusion, what can we take away from today? Well, we made the most of our shell choices, and we made the most of our ship in being able to get into an effective firing range on the fringe of our engagement range with our turrets in order to do the damage with our shell types. But being in the situations where our foes were able to keep up with us to an extent in order to pursue us down and do a lot of damage, we needed to keep our survivability high to be able to stay in the game for the long period and then do that damage. So what did we do exactly in those situations when we had multiple foes against us, such as the 2 vs 1, i.e. the Dresden and the Jakuma bearing down on us? But we made sure to continuously change our direction on our rudder, sending it from left to right continuously, making ourselves a very difficult target to hit, and using unpredictable patterns. This meant we could sustain a lot of fire on our foes who were heading on singular directions, meanwhile when they opened fire on us, they would only scratch us with one or two shells rather than a full salvo. And in the end, by the fact we'd taken so many high explosive shells to the aft of our ship, this meant that the aft section of our ship went black and was no longer taking the maximum possible damage and was only taking light scrapings of damage. So as a result, we made sure to go into situations with the confidence in our shell types and indeed our ship, and whenever we felt under pressure, we made sure to wiggle our way out of the situation. But on top of this, I also hope that today's video has acted as a nice send-off to the Tier 1 ships of old, i.e. patch 0.5.9.1 and before that, and now we must press on to patch 0.5.10 as of the next video next week. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video, why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships videos on my channel. But until next time, as always, ladies and gentlemen, Take care and fair seas.